Um, kia ora tātou te whanau, ko huhi mai nei, uh, mō tēnei kaupapa toi ako. Uh, welcome again to the Toyako webinar series. Uh, nā koe te honore e tēnei pō, uh, te tuku i, te, I ngā mihi atu kia koe e kare. Uh, tēnei te kaikōrero uh, mō tēnei pō koutou mā. Uh, Māku e tukuna te wāki aia, hei uh, whakamārama mai kō wai ia. Uh, nō hea ia in hea te kaupapa o tēnei rā. Kea koe e kare. Kia ora e hoa. Uh, hei ngā kāwai nui, hei ngā kāwai roa, o ngā wai whakatere tanipa, o ngā wai pau, ngā hoi, o ngā mātua tūpuna. O tira, uh, nau mai, haro mai, whakatau mai ki tēnei kaupapa. Uh, ko te tumanako, ka tirohia e kaitau, kia hau me uh, akuna. Uh, nō reira, nau mai, haro mai, whakatau mai. Uh, he iru mokopona tēnei. Ano te whāna apanui, a ngā tiparau me wai kato tainui hoki. He tū whakaiti tēnei a koutou, a ngā mihi, a ko te Carlson tōku ingoa. I want to um, begin by reading a poem by Papa Hohepa Dalamere. The mystery of all creation is in the goddess breath. She takes a piece of earth and blows it into space. Her life force creates the universe. The human mind, with many illusions, thinks it's important. If we could understand her neutrality, we would know that we are nothing but potential that came from the exhale of a wondrous God. That potential lies in all of us, especially our babies. This is our youngest boy, Tawati Tihi, or Te Rāwhitiroa, and this is his first moment um, in Te Ao Marama, gazing into the world. Um, I wanted to start here because this is very much a part of um, the presentation and my philosophy around whakarongo, whakarongo, whakarongo. Um, we, he was born here in our whare at home, um, behind me in a, in a pool, and um, from conception right through to um, labour, we gave our no roles um, while I was hapu and then in the labour process they again had roles and this is to um, iterate the fact that they'll have roles throughout his life and be an important part of him growing and becoming into a, into a great man and a, and a tupuna one day. Um, so this is a, an, a moment of emancipation and a wider experience for our whānau. And this is um, the presentation is very much around presence, seeing, feeling and being today. And as we all we have our moments, uh, thank you very much for sharing this one with me. Usually when I'm presenting um, as an artist, I like to uh, present um, in a space um, in front of an audience with my easel on the side and then I have a big, big black um, piece of card and then I get um, like liquid chalk that because it dries real quickly and then like as I as I call it all then I'll turn to my painting and I'll do a little bit of painting and then I'll turn back um, and then as the presentation carries on you'll see the painting evolve and um, it's quite exciting to engage in something that you're not just listening to me, you're actually seeing something um, live and evolving. But I, I obviously couldn't do that when, with you today, so I've done this digitally, and I'm actually particularly interested to see if it resonates with you in any way. Um, so let me know in the comments, because um, I, I really want this to be still part of the mahi that I do, and I'm trying to do this through the slides. So as we go through the presentation, you'll see the put the painting evolve, and I'll ask some parts. I um, particularly the part I is what do you see? Fakarongo, uh, fakarongo, fakarongo, fakarongo. Ki tangi ata manu e karanga nui tui 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 a tui ki runga tui ki raro tui ki roto tui ki wahu tui te hire tangata e karongo te po karongo te po. Tui te hire tangata e heke mai, i Hawaii ki nui, i Hawaii ki roa, i Hawaii ki pā mama, e hono ki te wairua, ki te whaio, ki te ao māero. Tihei mauri ora. So this chant is um, by Edawera Sterling, and it's very much the premise for uh, the mahi that I do. Um, it's 
it's a lot about whakarungo, 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 and your puku, and it's not so much about listening with your with your tāringa. Um, and I I wanted to start um, and talk a little bit about what I do. Um, so this is a painting that I did um, to represent the mahi that I do, um, and I just wanted to honour that everyone that looks at this painting um, brings their own lens. So I regard all knowledge um, as legitimate and wisdom as context specific and it's coloured by our whakapapa, it's coloured by our experiences and our so social and cultural grounding. Uh, so at the centre you'll see is the korari, um, that's the flower stalk of the harakike and it's strong, it's durable, um, it's an important part of the harakike, it feeds the tui, feeds the kurimako, the pihipihi and um, for me, kaupapa Māori research and psychology is fed and held by our people. Uh, the maroon um, colour in here is chosen to represent Papa Tuanuku, the foundations of soil and clay, representing healing and grounding. And uh, the kākariki rāranga at the bottom represents um, the grassroots bottom-up and sort of collaborative mahi that I do. Uh, and then the kauta, the gold at the top rāranga, represents aspirations, visions, um, aspiring towards greatness and well-being for all. Um, the manaya, the, the white around the korari, uh, represents modi and acknowledging the, the like fluid boundaries that I go in between my role, um, whether that's researcher, evaluator, philosopher, um, mama, um, friend, you know, all those different spaces um, are fluid and, and shaped by that by that korari. Um, and it represents the essential vitality and, um, and essence that's in all of us. And also you see that it goes up, up into the sky, so it's showing that um, it goes beyond the physical realm. Um, that, that frame around the side represents um, He Waka Putanga, um, Declaration of Independence and Te Tiriti o Waitangi, so that very much grounds the work that I do. And the tukutuku panels represent whakapapa, so I chose the potama panels um, to associate to higher learning, and I chose it to represent my never-ending pursuit to be better, to learn, evaluate and improve in my mahi. Um, but what I've come to know is that the more I learn, the less I know. Um, and the less I can spell, um, <laughs> think of words, eh, that, that come to mind are kind of filled with all these all this stuff that sometimes doesn't matter. Um, in the sky, you see the biggest star, that's uh, Rehua, uh, who lives in Te Putahi Nui o Rehua, um, Huarangatira to uh, Matariki, and uh, Rehua is uh, mortal, considered the medicine man, um, so he's the power to cure blindness, death and disease, and and becoming one of the brightest stars in the sky. Um, he shines in winter above us and that was the recognition of um, when I painted this picture. So I ask what do you see? Um, that's, that's the part I ask so I'm gonna in the next image I ask what, what when, I, when you look at it first what are the, the kupu that come to mind? Maybe three kupu if you could share in the chat. Um, three things that come to mind when you see this. Um, I often ask, you know, audiences and I ask for feedback. Um, I present, um, you know, internationally um, to Māori and non-Māori and often um, the, the stuff that's coming back. So do we have like some, some kupu that are being shared? Maybe the three kupu that are coming through. Tete says, I see, well done, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another one's come through, Kaimoana. Yeah. Um, um to Wairua. Yeah, yeah. So um that's beautiful. Yeah, so that for for me this is um this is my whakapapa. Um on Maui on the on the left side is uh Ngatihiro Tama, now Kawai Tama, Ko Paikia, uh the many peaks of Paikia. And um, you're on like so as as we're standing and looking down you're on a bit of a saddle, and then on the other side there's another peak. And behind me um, is my awa, ko whangaparawa te awa. Behind the awa is uh, my marae, ko kauwaitangu hia te marae. 
Um, beneath my feet is um, my hapu, ko te whanau kauai tango here te hapu, a ko te whanau awhanui te iwi. Uh, this is um, a very significant space that's close to my heart and, um, and I, I think it's the centre of the universe, <laughs> as we all do in our own um, hapu. And it's, um, it's called Taunga Waka and it's um, where our waka Tawira Mai Tawhiti came in and um, it didn't actually make it way in, they, um, they could smell the power, they said, from, from far away and came into this bay and um, it capsized and so um, we didn't quite land here and it's probably not the best place to come into so we wondered, what, you know, why is this small bay with sheer cliff sides a place where our waka would come to? And there's also our bigger waka, um, Tainui, Matatua, Tukumaru, Te Arua. They um, stopped in and, um, and then a few others went past. So um, looking at that and knowing, knowing that, that, that history, we know this intimately, that that's the story and that's, um, that's our, our truth, our history. Um, but others have, um, particularly Noa Māori, that come into that space and question that. And we've had our Western scientists come in and test that theory and learnt, yeah, that that's it's true, um, because out in the um, horizon uh, is the Kermadec Trench, and the Kermadec Trench, um, because of the um, sea sea geography on the floor, um, causes a lot of currents to come in, which would draw in the waka that way, which draws in the um, the tohura, uh, the whales coming through as well, and and they um, kind of migrate and go past. Um, so that so we understood stood this well before Western science, and so in many ways Western science is just catching up mm -hmm. to our knowledge. I just wanted to put that in there. Um, Connection to, uh, between Papa Tuanuku and Dangi was another one that um, someone has sort of come through. Uh, in sure. Nice. And then it's just just uh, um, to show you um, the the Kermadec Trench in the dark colour there um, where it comes into the bay. So that's the, it's called a, quite some known to some people as Cape Runaway. That's the, um, the area, Whangaparawa. Um, so not the one, you know, North Auckland. And then you've got the currents there um, in the white, just to show you um, why they would have ventured into that particular point and then went around the coast. Um, so in knowing that and in knowing um, what brings our lens and that our lands can hold our history and hold our whakapapa. I again show um, another image and I've been in the space where um, um, in, in non-Māori spaces where people have said oh you know that's, there's a road and it's along the coastline and it's going to somewhere um, looks like it's you know there's a beach and there's um, some holiday homes and things like that um, but there's a tension here that's very real for my whānau and um, that tension is between um, I guess tourists or people that aren't known in that area um, they come and camp around here and this is um, Uruaiti, um, this is our ukai pō so this isn't a road to somewhere, you have already arrived um, in this space and that Pahutakawa tree holds lots of significance for our whānau so my, um, my great-grandmother she was um, an amazing woman. She contributed to the hapu through her babies. So she had 23 tamariki and um, 14 um, that survived past infancy. And my nan was the youngest um, of the 14. And she had 13 girls and one boy. And they were dairy farmers just there. And you can see the fence line just a little bit back up the hill. And pretty much she... Um, what happened is, you know, in dairy farmers, there's kind of those peaks and flows, and but you know, with all the all the kids, it was good. It was a good workforce, but there were times when they had to send them away, and the um and the hapu in different areas um, they went to, and of course, as they grew, um, they didn't really um, travel around and commute that much, um, so they grew up in their own different, um, brought up by different iwi, um, different hapu, and then I ended up the only boy. Um, came across one of the sisters and didn't know and they fell in love um, and became lovers and um, our koro found out and um, went to them and said you know you, you can't be together and so what ended up happening was they took their own lives um, you know in the name of their love and my um, 
my great aunt is buried up in the Urupa, and my um, great uncle is built uh, buried under this Putakawa tree. And so we have a, a sign there that says no camping. And um, a lot of people come to the area and pull that sign out and camp under that Putakawa tree. And so the, I wanted to bring this message, um, like this personal message to this space and share this with you uh, because our land speak. Um, if only people would listen. E whakarungo, whakarungo, whakarungo. Um, this is an image again of um, um, of our land of our whenua going from um, pre-1840 to today and it goes just through the stages in the land of um, how it was stolen from us and then you get to the to the last dotted image of um, it all kind of turning to white I'll just show you that last image there and you might see in the in the corner where I was showing before with the map that um, I wish I had a pointer I think probably um, it's it's quite dark and um, and far up and we uh, we own ninety percent of our land so very fortunate um, at the you know the lands there are a bit rugged and steep and so they weren't you know seen as um, being of value at that time and, and we've maintained our lands um, so we I want to take this reality this history forward um, for all of us to practice in the presence of history in all the spaces that we go to in, in, in our mahi and in our everyday life, a land that was and is stolen. And as Moana Jackson, my our rock star, um, um, he says, when we rename, or when we reclaim our truth, the injustice, we can reclaim the truth in our power. So what is our power? So this is the, pa the painting evolving and I've added some to it and this is also any time for questions if we have any so far. How am I going? Am I all right? Yeah. Were you with me? Okay. <laughs> I have a part way around the image um, that you shared in terms of, you know, from your first quadrille that you're talking about, what, what do you see? Um, Kione, I was looking more at the environmental side of that because I don't know, you know, now that I know your quadrille, you know, it's a lot more meaningful. Um, and I think that's probably one of the things, uh, it also tell Māori that we can be a bit shy about sharing um, those particular personal stories, uh, you know, in terms of, it possibly, I don't know, being interpreted the wrong way, um, Tahiwa. So, you know, I saw that as how do, how do I resonate with that kaupapa? And I was looking at the taiao in terms of the cloudy space up the top, uh, about it looking like it might be a pakanga of some sort about to go down in that image. So, um, I think it's, 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 the actual connection um, to that space for you and how that's informed the whakarongo, whakarongo, whakarongo. So, tūtai imi here, atu ana. Not really a part, I just a... Builder. So, I I really feel like our power is in our pūrākau, um, in our whakapapa, in our whenua. Um, <laughs> so, pretty much our power is relational. Eh? Um, so this is just moving on to uh, Kaupapa Māori evaluation. So this is um, my research um, that I just wanted to bring as an example today in terms of um, understanding whakarungo, whakarungo, whakarungo. And I've been involved in the topic of chronic illness and medication use for like um, over a decade. Ooh, man, I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> And in 2008, I was awarded a summer studentship with Ngā Pai um, o Te Maramatanga, and I investigated the public meanings of um, medications. And then I went on to do my master's um, investigating um, medication use and meaning in Māori households um, with a chronic uh, member that had a chronic illness. And then in 2010-11, I um, began my PhD and this research explored transforming health literacy 
by reclaiming historical practices that were shared by Māori to develop a kaupapa Māori health literacy evaluation framework. This is a bit of, bit of a long one there. Um, but my research is based around an innovation with a um, iwi health organisation, Ngāti Pro Haura, and um, that defines health literacy within the context of the community. So we specifically focus on CBD medications, just to give it um, a, an area that was um, really important at that time, and it is today, around um, heart disease medications. So in, um, it was part of a bigger kaupapa, uh, so we had like a tripart um, partnership between um, Canada, Australia and Aotearoa, and um, the focus was strengthening health literacy among Indigenous peoples. So my particular kaupapa was to carry out this evaluation um, around the health literacy intervention, which we'll get into a bit later, and then to develop some wider learnings um, around um, what health literacy means to the Māori community, Ngāti Pirahaura, and then um, abroad, so I took it over to um, Hawaii. Um, I just wanted to um, talk a little bit to Kaupapa Māori, um, and I think it's important um, just to state what that, what that means to me, and um, I land on the only Pihama's kōrero, um, around these, like, these core basics to kaupapa Māori, that it's distinctive to Aotearoa, um, that it's premised and based in Mataranga Māori. Um, it's very much self-determining. We define what kaupapa Māori means, nobody else. Um, it must be transformational in some way, so not in a big, you know, revolutionary way, but it must be transformational, meaning that it must have some change or action to it. And there's multiple expressions, so what, how I talk to and how I go about doing kaupapa Māori might look quite different to how other people have um, done it, um, but that doesn't mean that it's less or more kaupapa Māori in, in the sense of you're using this basic foundational mahi. Um, and then it's for me, which is important as a community psychologist, is that it's systemic and structural. So it looks at, doesn't look at an issue or concern or anything in its, um, in its bubble, it like looks at all the structural issues which have caused that um, issue or concern to happen. So I wanted to um, just give you an insight into why, why would she look at Māori medications? I've never taken any um, and like um, luckily in my, my immediate whanau whan aren't taking any CBD medications. Um, but I wanted to just give you a little insight by reading you my poem. Um, that I wrote at the beginning of my PhD and asked you the question, how do you feel when you hear this? His skin is rough, blistered and calloused, caused from years of manual labour. Living in a world of inequality, he has never asked for help. He wears a coat of armour made of pride and resilience. It's thick, dark and primed. But on the inside, he is vulnerable, made of cells, vessels, blood and bones. His body has seen better days. But his heart still beats for his mokopuna, his tamariki, his whanau, his whenua. But he is dying, dying in silence. The symptoms are present, tucked away underneath the armour. The signs are there, but no one sees, or is no one willing to look. In a world of inequality, in a world in a system of injustice, his armor is cracking. Our people, our people are dying, dying from a disease that is preventable, livable, manageable, damaging bodies, hearts, fano, our future. This is CBD, heart disease. So you can see the, the painting has been added to a bit more, adding a bit more texture to that space. Well, me might tell you that they, they see a whale tail on the left from the previous. Ah. Mm. Kilda. So I've been talking a bit, little bit about this word literacy, health literacy, um, and I wanted to give you insight into what I'm talking about. So have a go at trying to read this. I won't give you long. <laughs> and um, 
I bring this slide up to convey not that health literacy is about reading and writing, but it's much more than that. Um, but I just wanted to give you an insight into how um, confusing things could be, particularly for a whanau that come into the health setting, into the health space, and they're faced with something new. They're faced with something that, that's not familiar to them, um, maybe words that they're not familiar with, um, a, a language that they, they're not quite trying to understand, um, and it can, it can take some time, and it can be quite confronting, and um, it's really about unpacking. So you're looking for that letter, you're looking at the next letter, and, does, and that makes a word, and then in that word, you connect it to the next word, and then that makes a sentence. And by the time you've read that sentence, then I'm talking, and then I'm gone on to the next thing, and you're like, hold on, I need to come back to figuring this out. But then once you get the flow of it and you figure it out, it becomes a lot more easier. But when things are like laid upon you quickly, sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming and, and that's what our, um, I guess our whānau can go through when um, being in the health setting, say having a, a stroke or a heart attack. I'll tell you a story that um, there was, um, when I was doing my research and there was a kaumātua, um, there was a, a kuroa and a kui, and they were in tiki tiki, and they were in the and he was out in the garden. They were telling me about what happened, and um, he was in the garden. I'm um, hoeing away, and then he felt this like real heavy weight come over him, and then he um, he couldn't move, and then he was trying to almost like yell out, yell out to her, you know, help me, like, something's going wrong, and then she came and goes, oh bloody hell, what's the matter? <laughs> What do you want, yo bugger? And then you know, come inside, have a cup of tea. And then he would, and he was kind of coming into a hurry up, man. And then um, she helped him up the stairs and sat him down. And what was happening, which they didn't recognise, was the symptoms um, of a stroke. Uh, and that was this happened in Tiki Tiki on a Saturday, and the clinic doesn't open till a Monday. And so they didn't want to. And the only way to get any help was to call the ambulance, which comes from all the way from Gizzy, and that's like you know a few hours away or a helicopter, so, but they didn't want to, you know, make a fuss. So pretty much what happened was <laughs> they waited. They waited till Monday. They waited till the clinic opened. And then, then they waited in the waiting room, you know, waiting for the doctor, went in, and then they said, oh, you know, he's been, can't talk properly, and he's being all funny. And then, you know, the doctor's like, oh, my gosh, ring them, you know. Ambulance, get straight here, you know, and that, and that's, you know, what our, what our whānau are facing. And, and it's complex and it's difficult um, and there's some layers to it. So this is why health literacy matters. Um, more than half the adults in Aotearoa um, have low health literacy, not just Māori. Um, they're less, so what happens is then you're less likely to use preventative services, like in the, um, in the story recognize the first signs of um, medical problems, effectively manage your long-term conditions, and communicate your concerns to your health healthcare professionals, doctors, nurses. And you're more likely to be hospitalized um, due to a chronic condition, um, use emergency services, and more likely to um, have workplace injury. So this, you know, I just wanted to give you a bit of insight into, into why it matters. Uh, this is a definition of um, the Western understanding of health literacy and basically what it means is that um, at an individual level you've got um, skills and knowledge and then that comes up against the um, the realm of the health system and that environment and then that's health literacy is at that interface that's the, the Western understanding and um, how I read into it and see it is that for Māori and Indigenous health literacy is, is way broader than that. So um, the literature talks about it being um, these levels of health literacy or waves and one is the basic um, functional literacy which you know we did in that, that slide you know from reading, writing um, and then the one we're doing now communicative um, interactive literacy, except it's more of a bit of a passive one, can't hear you fellas on the <laughs> other end. Um, and then there's critical literacy, which is looking at the, um, the 
critical knowledge of information that's supplied. Um, but what I um, was thinking while I was reading it is there seems to be a whole lot of like values and principles that have been promoted, like Western ones, Parkia ones that are coming through. And there's this like invisible culture that they're not talking about. And then I'm seeing it through that Māori lens, that Whanaungatanga lens, like where is that? Um, who's, whose agenda are we striving for? Are we striving to be this, this individual person figuring things out? Why don't we, you know, draw on the support of our whanau? And, and that's not there. And why isn't it there? Because all this money from the health system poured into this in, um, interventions around health literacy, um, it's not going to do any good for us. There's a pa painting adding a few more lines, a bit more texture to that space. One of the um, comments that it came through was a little while back, I think, was talking about why the government drags the chain on learning about New Zealand history and the Māori lands, because once the truth is known, then the power shift will change. How mm. Mm. And that's so true, you know, like, why? It's, it's almost like we get to university and we find out, um, the, you know, the truth, but we had to pay for it. Yeah. It's a real, like... So that's why I'd like, like to spend a bit of time with my, um, with my tamariki talk, talking about decolonization, talking about institutional racism, not using those words, not using that kupu, but um, I think it's really important. Um, and if we are to transform the, you know, the health system, the education system, I think that's a great place to start. Yeah. How do you find the balance or even the bridge of communication for Fano who may describe their health in the way you did at the beginning, but find it hard to be understood by those who they are describing it to, or understanding their health is made up of their whakapapa when that may be a foreign concept? What's your thoughts? Mm, I've got um, an awesome little diagram um, coming up, um, and I hope that that will resonate in some way and a bit more um, story to that. Um, so yeah, I'll def I'm definitely touching on um, some of the ways we can do that and the responsibility that it's all our responsibility, um, particularly those in power um, that I like to push it on. So yeah, kia ora, kia ora for that question. We, we get in there. <clears throat> so, um, oh, sorry, just go back. Um, just before, I just wanted to also land on a point that um, when I was looking at um, how can I break, like transform in any way the space and, and bring that, that kaupapa Māori lens to health literacy, I didn't want to um, do it the same like boring, academic, dry way um, or in, in any way follow someone else's methodology. So I, I created this, this method well before I knew anything about co-design and anything about um, co-creation or any of that stuff and you found out all about that later <laughs> um, but this is the the method that i followed because i thought what's important is to um, not pull the master's house down with the tools that it was built with and that was um kathy Irwin said that and it's very much around we've got to think outside the box we've got to get and and for me that's drawing on my my um, strengths, um, my passion for art, and that's using um, creativity as a means to communicate. And so I started um, with doctors and nurses and health, you know, all these health professionals and managers and um, and that, and got them to you know put pen pen to paper and maybe draw some pictures. And that was very uncomfortable for them. Um, so first we started with our left hands. I mean, sorry, not our left hands, our non-writing hands. So you get a bit used to um, drawing and, and not, you know, being comfortable with what you're drawing and got them to write out kupu that resonate for them around what haora looks like um, in their different areas. And then they put all those kupu into the centre and then we kind of created a circle round and then we started drawing images that represented haora. So just show you there. And this is, um, these images are from when I went to um, Oahu in Hawaii. Um, so I went to the World Indigenous Peoples Conference on Education uh, and we um, did some drawings. Poor Marie. Um, 
Yeah, good boy, good boy. And we did some drawings and the, um, these are some of the ones that were left behind and I got permission to, to draw up. And the boys were there too, they did their, they did their drawings as well. So they were part of it. I hope they're the, the, the writing hands. <laughs> oh, they, they were allowed to draw with their, um, any hand they wanted with their foot. <laughs> um, and pretty much this, yeah, this is what came out. And um, so you can see there the um, constellation of the emu, which is um, important and um, significant for the, um, uh, oh, the, the Vano around Sydney. Yora Nation and then um, Kanaka Māori the, and the, um, the basket kitty with the um, those um, flames coming out and then um, but the, what what is shared in the space is wider very much wider and that spir spiritual connection to Te Taiao, to Rangi and to Papa um, and then from there what I did was I put all those images on one side of the board um, and, and put them up there for everyone to see. And, you know, this is where we're going. This is the vision. This is how order for us. And then what does health literacy now in the, in the Western sense contribute in any way? It does it. Um, and to, to draw that out. So the invisible values and principles that were in those definitions, I so type them, put them all up there on the left. And then I drew out the images that were coming through. And sorry if you can't see them properly. At the top are some books. And the second one is a fella like reaching for a carrot. That means um, motivation was part of, their, part of their value system. And there's a, a picture of a um, compass. So they, they talk, talk about navigation. Um, talk was very much um, part of it. There's like a director's board there. Action was part of um, health literacy. So that's all the values that they promote on that side. And there's here we are. And then what's happening in the middle? How do we transform that space? For, so we're shifting in some way towards actionable change for our people. So then we got to the, to the writing again and we had a bit of a wānanga and drew, put, put um, some of the interventions that we're doing at that time. And what was the good things that were happening? Where are the things that are missing? And we brought them together and then we started lumping in these themes and these key areas. And this is pretty much the beginnings of the health literacy framework. And, and I think this, this kind of process can happen in a lot of different spaces. It doesn't necessarily just have to be about health literacy. It could, it could be about health promotion. It could be about dietetics. It could be about kai. Um, but what it's doing is it's just getting you to holistically can see, I guess, where the the, the status quo is, and then how we need and where we want to go, and then what's that space and what does that look like. But the most important part in this process is that it's relational, that we're talking, and that we're and that we're you know fitzy fitzy through that through that journey. And uh, so this is uh, my little PhD journey graph research thing. Um, it's very technical, um, and pretty much those arrows are pointing to where I met with. Um, our advisory committee that were um, with Ngāti Pro Holder, they were made up of you know, health professionals, doctors, nurses, non Māori, Māori, Komatua, um, iwi representatives, and they guided the framework. So, what I did was I went in to the Fano that had um, been through that experience and they were using CVD medications. And then, um, then I met with the doctors and nurses, um, the ones in the front line, the health professionals, and then I went to this advisory committee to help frame and, and make this framework to come to life. And then I took it internationally. Um, but yeah, these are these little loops because it was very much felt like I was getting nowhere. It's going backwards. Um, it was quite a journey. And then, you know, like the old crash and burn went right down and I'm giving up, I'm not doing this anymore. And to the point where I was like with my supervisors and they were like, you know, um, you can give up, but those stories that were told to you, um, were they just for your ears? And I was like, oh. No, they weren't. Okay. I got to do it in and hide it on Yeah, hide it on you. Hide it on you. Um, and in that last arrow was um, showing that that point where um, it got to it really got to the point where they were like, "Oh, this Nazi Pro Holder." We're like, "Oh, this framework is ours." And I was like, 
yeah, it's yours. Mm -hmm. This is all you. This is, I'm just a mere um, facilitator in this process. Like this, this is, has not come from me. This has come mm -hmm. from the people. Um, so that was like a real like, yeah, moment and kind of like, yeah, I can do this and, and push forward. So yeah, just a little um, insight into it gets messy um, and just like the painting, you might not be able to make sense of what you see, um, but you, you keep going because you've got that vision in front of you. Don't worry about trying to read this slide. I know it's, um, it's just really a slide to show you that I did some mahi. <laughs> um, but the main things that I wanted to share was that um, in the red circle is that it's around that action, you know, when they slide around Kaibaba Māori, it's around transformation. And the areas that are important in this, in this framework um, was around uh, first equitable relationship, what does that mean? Whakawhanaungatanga, uh, connection and holistic health, what does that mean? Hauora, capacity building. Um, is very important. So that's around practicing in the presence of history, whakapapa. And then the bottom there, collective priorities. What is that around? That's around whakapono, so contextual understanding the causes of causes. And then if you look at the, the lines that, the, that they come under, that's the systemic and structural view that you need to present. So what, is tr what does health literacy look at the health, health force professional level? What does that look like at an intervention level? What does that look like at a health organization level? And then what does that look like at a health service level? So there's a systems change. And then underneath that is that indigenous peoples have the right to define what health literacy is for them. Um, nobody else. And then what that looks like is it comes from the community, it comes from whānau. Um, so you've got to not necessarily take I didn't want to present this as a framework for health literacy for um, Aotearoa. This is Ngātipuro, um, but it's a space where you can start and maybe make some changes and some tweaks if you wanted to. Um, but it's very much owned by the community. Um, so next I wanted to give you a bit of a, a diagram and insight into um, when I look back at all of this, what does this mean? Like, how are people going to take this forward in their everyday um, practices? Um, whether that's whānau and whether that's um, health professionals, um, whether that's policy writers, whether that's people in the health system. What does this mean? Um, so I did this, this diagram and really underneath it is that we should have our foundations in whatever we do that we practice in the presence of history as said by Ingrid Hugens. And it's really around the basis of our knowledge and our communication and our literacy and our learnings is all based in Purako. It's based in story. It's based in whakapapa, our lived stories, our stories of origin, our history, just as I shared with you um, some stories about me. Hopefully we can connect on that level and it can help you listen to me um, a little bit easier. Um, it's our identity, it's te taiao, um, the natural law and the cosmos. So that's the basis to our communication and everything that we know and we be. Then from there, mātou a whiako, which is our lived experience. That's the things that we can, that testing ground, that we take the purako and then we go out and we test them, you know, and, and have a bit of a go and then see if those, do those things match the, those purako and can we learn from them. And then we've got whakahurutso, which is our practice. Um, so that's really, that, that level, that area is where um, what health professionals are trying to, to um, I want to say change, alter. It's getting people their attitudes, what they think are right. So they're only looking at that, that, that top area, that practice part, rather than the connection. So instead of trying to go in in this information level and trying to push things at you, when you haven't even connected with me, then I'm not going to really listen with you because we're not, we're not vibing, eh? There's no, no, no modi in the room. Um, so you're just trying to get with this whole corridor of adherence and compliance that what I tell you, you must listen and take these medications and just do it. 
um, but that doesn't work. And then you've got um, the Western framing of knowledge acquisition. So you've got um, how they look at um, and attain knowledge around the data. So we go and collect some data. And then from there, that generates information and we test that, test that information and then that generates knowledge. But what's missing from there, and yeah, I'm not seeing puraka, I'm not seeing connection, but how about let's take the best of those paradigms and those paradigms and bring them together for the well-being of Fane. So I thought about it and I thought, well, let's take Puraka, it's still very much based in that, and that's never gonna shift, just like a moma moves for no one. And then above that, you've got you know those winds and the skies that can bring down that rain, that data, that information, and together they synergize into Matauranga. You know, that essence of, of wisdom. Then we draw those together, and then those can always guide us in our in our stories and the way ways of being <clears throat> sorry i just lost where i was going um so in essence nothing shifts ever from our from our whakapapa our ways of knowing and being always begins in story so we're always embodied through our connections to place to time to histories and they're interwoven and engaged with how we are in the world. And they are a product of our experiences. Those lived experiences then test and evaluate our narratives in the context including the interactions with people. And our experiences then inform our practice and encompass our attitudes, our abilities, and ultimately our mātauranga. So the painting is kind of coming near to its completion. You might see um, what it is. But and just any more, any more parts? Are we all good? I, I, there's some parts that have come through. Um, I think you've kind of touched on uh, a couple of these, but uh, some of them are comments also. So by using a health literacy framework, how are the services, practitioners, policy writers, and overall system designers being addressed, audited, or audited to be held accountable? and how far are communicated authentically with. Mm, definitely. So how are they? Um, they're not, they're, um, this, this mahi, which I completed um, two or three years ago now, um, I've been um, promoting it in ways. Um, Ngāti Hauda went on to utilize this framework to inform their model of care practices. And then um, I think it is an important tool to have, um, hold our foundation in our model of care and our indigenous ways of being and the way that we um, perform in our health services. And I think it's really around um, accountability. And so we're doing our part and publishing and, and trying to put this out there, but um, I guess, people have to pick it up and use it. Otherwise, it's just going to be, you know, another thing that sits on the shelf, unfortunately. I think at least kind of well into one of the other ones that have come through as well. So ultimately, there must be a balance between how whānau are supported or grown in the evolving understanding of health information and the responsibilities of those who relay it. So, you know, that, that quarter that you're talking about, about, uh, I guess, the translation or, or how the, the mātauranga is shared in those spaces in a way that's, both, I guess, applicable um, to the individual, but also encompasses their understanding of their worldview. You know, Aqua Māori, he did it here to te tai rapiti, to te tai tokero, to um, te tai tonga me ki. So there's different components and different areas that might um, play a, a really important part in, you know, them actually capturing that mātauranga. So, I mean, he pai rawa te kite you know, it's awesome to see some traction starting to happen in the space where the two worlds come together, which is one of the comments that's come through as well. It, mm. it was a, an example of framing a two world, um, two world view. Yeah, yeah. I don't um, just looking at our time, oh, geez, that went fast. 
<laughs> so I wanted um, to just show you a few um, kind of key messages that when I presented this to back to Ngāti Parau Haura and to different health practitioners in the space that I go, particularly non-Māori, the questions that came back um, were, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm doing good in my practice, you know, things are going pretty well, you know, it's just the, you know, the Māori patients aren't listening. I'm like, did you just hear my presentation? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, well, do you know what your problem is? And they're like, oh, no. And then I'd say, well, that's your problem. <laughs> and leave it there. Because um, sometimes, it, you know, we need to be confronting to actually right. incite some change. Um, so that's what that slide is about. Do you know what your problem is? And if you don't. Some people, are, some people people are better than that than others aren't they <laughs> yeah. that confronting side of things yes yeah and i think that you know the, the, especially our komato on that who i think would find it really difficult to tuck a humana so they just sort of shy away from a lot of those opportunities yeah. this is the thing that needs to be heard in order to you know do things the right way so you know here here how do we how do we encourage that in and encourage our, our whanau and our komatoa to be able to be proud of, you know, them being able to showcase and share what they have. True. Yeah, one of the um, komatoa, like one of the, in the intervention, they said, you know, you've got to ask questions. And the komatoa was like, huh? I ask questions, but you don't listen. You know, so it depends on what lens you're bringing to that, to that engagement. Another another one that came up was like, I don't have time to chit chat, you know, I've got to write my notes, I've got to um, make that engage, the initial assessment, and then I've got to write out a prescription all in that 15 minutes time. And what was real important is to know that um, how about the Komatua shared, you know, how about spending those three minutes you spent offending me, connecting with me? That simple doesn't have to be necessarily around whakapapa. It can be the fact that you both like um, going to the beach, both have mokopuna, um, both, you know, like wearing t-shirts, I don't know, just it does anything, connect on that. It's not even a Māori thing, it's a human thing. To be seen is really important before you start getting into, you know, jumping into that. And then another important factor, I think, is kawafakaruruho, which is cultural safety. And that's paramount. And that's not your understanding or perception of Māori culture, or any culture for that matter. It's around health professionals, practitioners, providing that safe, trusting environment to invite and engage others about our whānau to be themselves, whatever that might be. So that's real important. So um, I just wanted to um, kind of get to this point and, and round off the key message um, before we close up. Uh, and that's around whakarongo, whakarongo, whakarongo. And that's very much around listening um, whatu manua, so listening with our mind's eye. And that's around our manua, listening with your heart, that emotional side, and your pū manua, your puku, listening with your intuition. And what that means for patients is that to listen with your mind's eye, your logic, is to hear. And then to listen with your puku, that emotional side, is to awaken. And then for your puku, is for you to feel. And for health professionals, what whakarungo, whakarungo, whakarungo means is around that logic to ask patients what they know, how do they understand the situation. And that's for them to hear, that's for the health professionals to hear. And then that, that heart side, that um, manua, that emotional side is to check in and build on that knowledge that they've shared and then maybe clarify some misunderstandings. And then in your puku, that last part, that intuition side for health professionals is around checking with your patients, whether they know they, they've understood what you've said in the conversation that's happened. So that's for, for you to feel. So whakarongo, whakarongo, whakarongo is that alignment and that whole sensory listening that has very little to do with your tāringa. 
So in this moment, it's complete. The painting's done. I've done my mahi. And so I've drawn it all up. And um, in this final moments, I can't do any more apart from transform it. And what does transforming mean is that I turn it around. And I've been painting that picture upside down that whole time. And now it makes sense. Things have shown itself. Um, this is this is my nan, Ramu, my great grandmother that I talked about before, Ramari Wairiki, um, Kotoki Tupuna. Um, I've decolonized her in the painting, as you'll see, took okay. her glasses off. <laughs> um, but she very much um, sits with me. She's oh, she's in the background there. We have a faka papa wall. Um, she guides me in everything that I do, um, visits me in my dreams, and um, she's here with me today. Um, but it's very much around um, what do I think is going to make her proud of me and my moko moko puna in the same sense. And that's what really draws me in the mahi that I do. So I just wanted to um, finish with rounding up the key points. Do I have enough time? Are we okay? Hi, Tony. Yeah, cool. Um, so what do we want to hold up after all of this, after this journey that we've been through, or whakarongo, 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 or what do you see, what do you feel, um, how are things going for you, and what did you see in that image? Um, the things I want to hold up for you is that to know that health literacy is about whanaungatanga. Um, that's all, all you need to say. Oh, how did you see? Oh, yeah, 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 for knowing I know that. Sweet, got it. <laughs> so it's increasing how that you see levels begins with connection. Um, something that Maori are expert at. Um, compliance and adherence do not exist when transforming how that you see. We are the experts in our own lives and our in our in our bodies. Um, connection is empowerment. So be present, seeing, feeling, and being first with yourself and then with others. Um, practice in the presence of history, learn our history of our lands, of our peoples, our tupuna. We're scientists, entrepreneurs, navigators, dreamers, philosophers, um, and we still are. Um, whakapapa is paramount. Um, so to know yourself is to know the universe. Um, learn and share your whakapapa and share your stories. Um, shift, shift power to those least in power. This is really important because um, the mahi that I do as a researcher, as evaluator, whether you want to call it collaboration, community, all the jargon, participatory, action, research, co-design, co-creation, all that kupu, make sure it's kaupapa Māori. So it's not co if it's not shifting power. And then also creativity is the highest form of human expression. It's a whole sensory learning, and, um, and it's about the fact that I've shown you my whanau, my baby's first views of the world, um, my most heartful story, my land, my maunga, my shores, my moana, my tupuna, and I've shown you the messiness of my journey as well. I've shown you my body, um, and you've all seen and felt and been with me, and I thank you. Um, I just will out to you all, transform your space, um, decolonize and indigenize, um, privilege te ao Māori, we owe it to the world. And I do lastly, um, I'll take any um, feedback or questions, but I will end on a pūrāko, I want to end on a kaumātua's words that I ended my thesis on. Good point. <coughs> um, ko, ko etahi, korero, um, e kare. So one of them was just thank you for this beautiful journey for one so young, so authentic and powerful. I love it. Uh, so there's, you know, people are resonating um, with the kōrero. I think that personal side of things is always something that draws, especially Māori, uh, into um, our, our particular kaupapa. Um, there is a pātā who's come through as well. Do you think there's a space for marae slash runanga based health navigators? Um, and it's got not to displace the responsibility away from the health professionals though. Mm. Oh, hell yeah. I would love to see like our health services all be placed in marae um, if, if that's what that marae wants and, um, 
and the navigators because what I like kind of ultimately envision as a researcher is to move hopefully the university isn't listening right now move completely away from universities and move back to the marae and become um, a hapu researcher in that space and, and kind of be in that and then I think um, navigators are um, the, the, the heart of how to help whānau orientate around this confusing system that exists definitely okay. um, just another comment thank you as a maori home birth midwife this still so in my um, puku and soul this sits in my puku and soul still <laughs> ah neat cool. okay. um, um there's <clears throat> One of the things that's sort of, I think, coming through is that everyone's really resonating with the kaupapa. So I think um, Koto Ma, uh, one of the things that's going to happen post this webinar is um, our kaikorero is going to um, share a little bit more that will go out into our evaluation. Alongside that um, will be a few other uh, additional resources and other kaupapa um, that you might uh, like to uh, have a titiro at. So um, at the conclusion of this webinar, Hey, our popo kaputa um, tera. So we'll send out the evaluation tomorrow. Um, and if you missed the part of the the beginning, uh, perhaps of this uh, webinar, um, the recording will be up um, at some point within the next few days as well. Ingari iringa itina mihia tu na kia kue ekare monga mato ringa ko fakataka to hiki atato kia kaito huki nga nga kaimahi nga fano nga mama nga papa. Uh, Koto Ma, uh, thank you very much for being a part of this webinar this evening. Uh, ko te hihi e nai nei, uh, kia, kia kapi i reira, tukina te rākau kōrero whakamutunga, ki tō tātou kai kōrero, mō tāna kōrero whakamutunga. So, um, take it away with your last kōrero, Ewa. Well, uh, and if you do feel like um, I've shared something and that, you know, you didn't want to miss out on it, um, definitely here, um, the, we'll share the contact details and please contact me. Um, also, I am co-chair of Ngā Mana Māori Allied Health, so that's very much part of me doing um, some action, some change and commitment in the community. It's free to join, so please come, um, join if you're in the health workforce, and um, we'd love you to become um, a part of our movement. Um, and also, I just created a website um, a couple of days ago. <laughs> Um, it's in its testing grounds, but just because you guys came, I would love to share it with you. It's called, oh, it's probably backwards. Um, it's called <laughs> lovers, loversyou.com, and it's got like little dash between lovers you. So um, check it out. It's just a blog um, that I share my art and share my work with um, on there. Um, we can so, do that in the post cons as well. Oh, cool, cool. Um, oh, I'm a bit nervous if it goes up too much, but yeah, to check my spelling mistakes. Um, but anyway, here's a here's a quoted all from Komatua. His name is George. I had time with myself the other day, last Sunday. My wife would have been eighty. My wife was on medications, and she was given an overdose. That's what started everything off. Oh, crikey. There were black rings all over her body. Even the doctors wouldn't accept it. She got really sick and nothing they could do to reverse it. There was an investigation and it was a medical mistake. In the community, the world is, word is going out. Intervention. People are starting to understand why we take our medication and get more onto it. Just like me, well, I didn't know half of what the doctor's word was all about until recently, till you came in. With my wife, she didn't know that. We were just ignorant of the fact. We just accepted. Not until afterwards when mother passed away, the nurse in the city told me afterwards that she was sorry. She was honestly sorry. I said, you could have got us all, she said, you could have got us all in trouble. I looked up and said, well, I'm sorry for my whānau. It's too late now, she's gone. So you get out there, girl, and you get that word out. You get them to know how it works and what's it all about. Get those doctors and that, best, that boss man on board too. It's not good enough. We don't know anymore. It's not good enough not knowing anymore. Kia ora koutou. Pō marie. Pō marie tātou te whānau.